now it's time for us to look at uh, some selected national dailies and tell you what the state of the nation is like this morning. Let's start with Daily Trust, which I already have a copy here in the studio. The lead story this morning says security biffed up as Kano Plateau, six other governors, no fate today. Where the riders, CPs, others, Kofokam, winners, Appalins, a bit and the issue at stake get details of that on page four at the top of that we have village head son eight others killed in kasena that is on page 21 very sad story there and let's move on to the next story it says ami denies allegation of poor feeding of troops page 31 has details of that story bandits abduct 23 in the federal capital territory Another sad story, page 12 has details of that story. Below the lead story, we have worry over 50% TSA deductions from aviation agencies. Page 23 has details. A kicker that says, Edugate, don't spare anybody, Obi tells Tinubu. Page 14 has details of that story. Man arrested for stealing 20 cartons of Quran, Hadith in Quara. Get details of that on page 21, how it all happened. And then we have a picture about a Palestinian Red Crescent personnel check, uh, a destroyed ambulance in the central Gaza Strip. Wow. And uh, the last story this morning is on ICJ hearing. South Africa wants Israel held accountable for genocide in Gaza. Get details of that story on page 10. And those are the stories We'll be picking from the front page of Daily Trust newspaper per this morning. All right, let's take a look at the Vanguard. Uh, at the top of the page there, it says 2024 budget. How we settled for 800 Naira to dollar exchange rate, according to the federal government. No grief for anybody. Lawyers fault police caution as army adopts slogan to fight insurgents. Nigerians can't make progress without the uh, federalism. That's according to Obong Atta. The major story here says educate APC government governors. Peter will be back to Nubu on probe. Attacks Governor Alia bars a local government chairman from leaving the domains. Alleged six billion dollar fraud. Ex power minister Ogunle gets 50 million naira bill. Uh, new bank CEOs will boost confidence. That's according to NECA, the ASSB FI, the analyst. We have 32-year-old bank staff commit suicide over harsh economy. It's a sad situation there. And the 2024 AFCON, uh, another injury that uh, scare for uh, eagles as Omar misses the training. Uh, you find that spot story on page 31. Now, joining us to review the front pages uh, this morning is Malam Nuruddin Abdullah, the editor of 21st Century Chronicles. Good morning and thank you for watching. Yeah, good morning. Nice good morning, for being uh, So there's a lot happening in the front pages of the National Dailies, a whole lot. But I want to get your take, your quick take on, uh, you know, these expectations of what is happening. The major story of the Daily Trust newspaper saying security beefed up uh, in Kano Plateau as uh, six uh, other uh, governors know the f their face or fate today. Uh, what is your take? I mean, you're from you're from Kano. You're an indigent of Kano. Mm. <laughs> so uh, tell us about, you know, your feeling as a Kano as a indigent. Okay, I think, uh, excuse me, uh, principally, uh, you know, this is the first time, particularly in this republic, that we're having um, very um, tense political situation with the NNPP and the APC uh, uh, groups. But um, if you look at it from the other angle, it's a D-Day for the national governor of APC, who won at the tribunal, as well as the court of appeal, as well as um, Abba Kabir Yusuf, who was the incumbent governor, but he was, um, who was declared after the March 18 governorship polls. What many people are looking at is this. We want whoever is best for the states for the development of the state, you should get it. And you know, it's not about prayers, you know, um, the lawyers have done their own. Mm. So it's left for the learned justices to decide. It's the D-Day. Mm. 
because from here, you just go back to your village, your farm, Dubai, or wherever, and plot for the next election uh, 2027. season. Yes, mm. and not only that, you know, we have about is it six or seven, mm. but the flashpoints are uh, maybe Kano, to a certain extent, Plateau, particularly with the recent. Mm, that, the upset uh, and exactly, uh, you know, Plateau is a hotbed of um, criminal uh, violence Plateau. and, mm. and uh, what if it. But aside that, you know, uh, as a politician, they know you win and you lose. Like they say, if you are a politician and you keep on winning, 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 you don't know the bitterness of losing, mm. then you are not that complete. So, but what we, the way we look at it is, whoever is going to win should work for the people of the state. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The, the people should win. Is it Kano? Is it Plateau? Is it uh, Zanfara? Is it uh, Ibonyi? Is it Lagos? You know, and what is it? But principally, you know, it is the, not the Kano and the Plateau, something that the stakes are high. High at the moment. Because even the security beef up, you know. Um, but I think people are wise. Hmm. Yeah, you should not stake your wise, neck. No for some politicians mm -hmm. because you won't see their children on the streets. Mm, no. <laughs> so if I, at all they I live think, in Nigeria. I think Nigerians <laughs> already <laughs> learned that one. All right, away from that, uh, Madam Meredith, let's talk about uh, this, another uh, issue that is happening about the Edu Gate. Uh, we've seen how, you know, this uh, regime, this administration is now holding people accountable and there's been a lot of in and out. And also APC governors and even the opposition party, which we agree criticism is allowed, uh, have come to probe to say that the president should also push a probe on all these particular issue, each, uh, situations happening. Are you surprised that Peter Obi is now uh, giving uh, another encouragement and a push for the president to do this at this time? Yes, and and you know why? Because we are coming from a sort of a despite the narrative, anti-corruption, anti-corruption. But you know, the anti-corruption agencies went to sleep in the last eight years of Buhari's administration. <laughs> if this did thing really, happened, did they really sleep? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they have been snoring. They, pro they probably were sleeping with one <laughs> eyes closed. You understand? That is why even the, you see Peter Obi, Atiku, and what of you. Because what he did, what Mr. Tinibu did, is uh, unexpected, unprecedented. Less than one year into his uh, government, you know, his, um, some of his appointees were caught with all these uh, manner of allegations. Hmm. He didn't consult the oracle or the imams or the pastors. You know, do the needful. That is why even the opposition, you know, despite the differences in political leanings, say, yeah, keep it up. Compared to what happened in the last eight years, more of this happened. The man will just look at the other way. So, and you know, the same party. And, you know, the president is sending a signal that it will not be business as usual. There are certain people who took certain things for granted. Look at what he's doing with the, with the CBN. Already CBN or Amcon has taken over about three banks who were acquired with alleged illicit fund. You know when the then uh, House of Reps member, Gudaji Kazori, who was banding all these figures, we were laughing. We thought that he was just a clown, per se. But now, with what the special investigator did, that thorough uh, scrutiny of that, <coughs> we realized, okay, the former CBN governor, MFLA, opened about 500 foreign accounts. He bought these banks, you know, all manner of things. And uh, if it were during the Bahari's regime, he can receive the report and keep it. But immediately, you know, he, we have seen the implementation. Mm -hmm. More people have been called upon to answer for their deeds. And more names have been mentioned. And more names, who knows? Maybe <laughs> when they <laughs> go into the palliative, you know. <laughs>
Okay, let, let, let's talk about the deteriorating security situation in the federal capital territory. Bandits abducting another 23 after we heard about abductions in the last week. What's your take on this development? I think um, the way our security agencies, you know, behaving is uh, actually not uh, encouraging. Do you know why? By the time they come up, accomplish certain feats, then they'll go back and relax and allow these bad elements to nurse their wounds, recoup and fight back. That's what it is. Look at what happened even in Kaduna, just on the outskirts of Abuja, the Jere area. About 30 people were reportedly abducted. The Kaduna State Police Command, I think who's placed on the, um, under their own territory, they said no, the bandits were actually migrating. Hmm. You can see that. Uh, so what does it mean? During the last administration, Kudos to the then CDS, Mr. General Erabo. Mm -hmm. He secured the Abuja Kaduna corridor. If you follow the road, you will see all those uh, um, super camps, you know, you'll see all this. But it seems that now they have relaxed. And that gives leverage to the bandits to study the situation and strike back. It's the same thing that is happening in Abuja. You remember, I think it's about two years ago when they launched multiple attacks on even the key security arm that protects the city, the presidential guard, the guard brigade. Mm. There was massive action against bandits. And they went down. But now they are coming back. So, so I think maybe they have to devise a plot where follow them, crush them once and for all. Mm. And don't clear the places that give even them cover. I mean, we, we've seen the, the minister of the federal government, uh, fe, uh, federal capital territory, rather, yes, and we he makes that attempt of, you know, crushing these slums where there's been alleged, yes, a home. That is one. Mm. That is one. So but people will complain. Continue. People are <laughs> complaining. But we hope that, they, of course, they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Because of time, you know, we don't have to. Well, there, there are lots of things to talk did, about uh, with you, but. Indeed. Thank you so much, Amala Meridian Abdullah, My pleasure. editor of 21st Century Chronicles, for joining us again this Friday. And we are definitely waiting for our pilot. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying this, you're, you're seriously doing this right now? I have to. Okay. I, have to put it I think there. this is where we need to draw the curtains and talk about the palliative matters of camera. My name is Martia Umar. Don't forget that Daybreak Extra returns tomorrow morning. Wes Mayo will be here, God's willing. But yes, for now, it's a goodbye from me.